Working time is the period of time that a person spends at paid labor. Unpaid labor such as personal housework or caring for children or pets is not considered part of the working week. Many countries regulate the work week by law, such as stipulating minimum daily rest periods, annual holidays, and a maximum number of working hours per week. Working time may vary from person to person, often depending on location, culture, lifestyle choice, and the profitability of the individual's livelihood. For example, someone who is supporting children and paying a large mortgage will need to work more hours to meet basic costs of living than someone of the same earning power without children. Because fewer people than ever are having children, choosing part-time work is becoming more popular. Standard working hours or normal working hours refers to the legislation to limit the working hours per day, per week, per month or per year. If an employee needs to work overtime, the employer will need to pay overtime payments to employees as required in the law. Generally speaking, standard working hours of countries worldwide are around 40 to 44 hours per week, but not everywhere, from 35 hours per week in France to up to 112 hours per week in North Korean labor camps, and the additional overtime payments are around 25% to 50% above the normal hourly payments. Maximum working hours refers to the maximum working hours of an employee. The employee cannot work more than the level specified in the maximum working hours law. Hunter-gatherer Since the 1960s, the consensus among anthropologists, historians, and sociologists has been that early hunter-gatherer societies enjoyed more leisure time than is permitted by capitalist and agrarian societies. For instance, one camp of Kung Bushmen was estimated to work two and a half days per week, at around six hours a day. Aggregated comparisons show that on average the working day was less than five hours. Subsequent studies in the 1970s examined the Macaguenga of the Upper Amazon and the Cayapa of northern Brazil. These studies expanded the definition of work beyond purely hunting gathering activities, but the overall average across the hunter gatherer societies he studied was still below 4.86 hours, while the maximum was below 8 hours. Popular perception is still aligned with the old academic consensus that hunter-gatherers worked far in excess of modern humans' 40-hour week. History The Industrial Revolution made it possible for a larger segment of the population to work year-round, because this labor was not tied to the season and artificial lighting made it possible to work longer each day. Peasants and farm laborers moved from rural areas to work in urban factories, and working time during the year increased significantly. Before collective bargaining and worker protection laws, there was a financial incentive for a company to maximize the return on expensive machinery by having long hours. Records indicate that work schedules as long as 12 to 16 hours per day, 6 to 7 days per week were practiced in some industrial sites. Over the 20th century, work hours shortened by almost half, mostly due to rising wages brought about by renewed economic growth, with a supporting role from trade unions, collective bargaining, and progressive legislation. The workweek, in most of the industrialized world, dropped steadily, to about 40 hours after World War II. The limitation of working hours is also proclaimed by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, and European Social Charter. The decline continued at a faster pace in Europe, for example, France adopted a 35-hour workweek in 2000. In 1995, China adopted a 40-hour week, eliminating half-day work on Saturdays though this is not widely practiced. Working hours in industrializing economies like South Korea, though still much higher than the leading industrial countries, are also declining steadily. Technology has also continued to improve worker productivity, permitting standards of living to rise as hours decline. In developed economies, as the time needed to manufacture goods has declined, more working hours have become available to provide services, resulting in a shift of much of the workforce between sectors. Economic growth in monetary terms tends to be concentrated in health care, education, government, criminal justice, corrections, and other activities that are regarded as necessary for society rather than those that contribute directly to the production of material goods. In the mid 2000s, the Netherlands was the first country in the industrialized world where the overall average working week dropped to less than 30 hours. <laughs> 
Topic: <laughs> Gradual decrease in working hours. Most countries in the developed world have seen average hours worked decrease significantly. For example, in the U.S. in the late 19th century it was estimated that the average work week was over 60 hours per week. Today the average hours worked in the U.S. is around 33, with the average man employed full-time for 8.4 hours per work day, and the average woman employed full-time for 7.9 hours per work day. The front runners for lowest average weekly work hours are the Netherlands with 27 hours, and France with 30 hours. At current rates the Netherlands is set to become the first country to reach an average work week under 21 hours. In a 2011 report of 26 OECD countries, Germany had the lowest average working hours per week at 25.6 hours. The New Economics Foundation has recommended moving to a 21 hour standard work week to address problems with unemployment, high carbon emissions, low well being, entrenched inequalities, overworking, family care, and the general lack of free time. Actual work week lengths have been falling in the developed world. Factors that have contributed to lowering average work hours and increasing standard of living have been technological advances in efficiency such as mechanization, robotics and information technology. The increase of women equally participating in making income as opposed to previously being commonly bound to homemaking and child rearing exclusively. Dropping fertility rates leading to fewer hours needed to be worked to support children. Recent articles supporting a four day week have argued that reduced work hours would increase consumption and invigorate the economy. However, other articles state that consumption would decrease. Other arguments for the four day week include improvements to workers' level of education due to having extra time to take classes and courses and improvements to workers' health less work related stress and extra time for exercise. Reduced hours also save money on daycare costs and transportation, which in turn helps the environment with less carbon-related emissions. These benefits increase workforce productivity on a per-hour basis. <laughs> Workweek structure The structure of the work week varies considerably for different professions and cultures. Among salaried workers in the Western world, the work week often consists of Monday to Friday or Saturday with the weekend set aside as a time of personal work and leisure. Sunday is set aside in the Western world because it is the Christian Sabbath. The traditional American business hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday to Friday, representing a work week of five eight-hour days comprising 40 hours in total. These are the origin of the phrase 9 to 5, used to describe a conventional and possibly tedious job. Negatively used, it connotes a tedious or unremarkable occupation. The phrase also indicates that a person is an employee, usually in a large company, rather than an entrepreneur or self-employed. More neutrally, it connotes a job with stable hours and low career risk, but still a position of subordinate employment. The actual time at work often varies between 35 and 48 hours in practice due to the inclusion, or lack of inclusion, of breaks. In many traditional white-collar positions, employees were required to be in the office during these hours to take orders from the bosses, hence the relationship between this phrase and subordination. Workplace hours have become more flexible, but the phrase is still commonly used. Several countries have adopted a workweek from Monday morning until Friday noon, either due to religious rules observation of Shabbat in Israel whose workweek is Sunday to Friday afternoon or the growing predominance of a 35 to 37.5 hour workweek in continental Europe. Several of the Muslim countries have a standard Sunday through Thursday or Saturday through Wednesday workweek leaving Friday for religious observance, and providing breaks for the daily prayer times. Topic. Average annual hours actually worked per worker Topic. OECD ranking Topic. Differences among countries and regions Topic. European countries In most European Union countries, working time is gradually decreasing. 
The European Union's Working Time Directive imposes a 48-hour maximum working week that applies to every member state except the United Kingdom and Malta which have an opt-out, meaning that UK-based employees may work longer than 48 hours if they wish, but they cannot be forced to do so. France has enacted a 35-hour workweek by law, and similar results have been produced in other countries through collective bargaining. A major reason for the lower annual hours worked in Europe is a relatively high amount of paid annual leave. Fixed employment comes with four to six weeks of holiday as standard. In the UK, for example, full-time employees are entitled to 28 days of paid leave a year. France. France experimented in 2000 a sharp cut of legal or statutory working time of the employees in the private and public sector from 39 hours a week to 35 hours a week, with the stated goal to fight against rampant unemployment at that time. The Law 2000-37 on working time reduction is also referred to as the Aubrey Law, according to the name of the Labour Minister at that time. Employees can and do work more than 35 hours a week, yet in this case firms must pay them overtime bonuses. If the bonus is determined through collective negotiations, it cannot be lower than 10%. If no agreement on working time is signed, the legal bonus must be of 25% for the first eight hours, then goes up to 50% for the rest. Including overtime, the maximum working time cannot exceed 48 hours per week, and should not exceed 44 hours per week over 12 weeks in a row. In France the labor law also regulates the minimum working hours, part-time jobs should not allow for less than 24 hours per week without a branch collective agreement. These agreements can allow for less, under tight conditions. According to the official statistics DARES, after the introduction of the law on working time reduction, actual hours per week performed by full-time employed, fell from 39.6 hours in 1999, to a trough of 37.7 hours in 2002, then gradually went back to 39.1 hours in 2005. In 2016 working hours were of 39.1. South Korea South Korea has the fastest shortening working time in the OECD, which is the result of the government's proactive move to lower working hours at all levels to increase leisure and relaxation time, which introduced the mandatory 40-hour, 5-day working week in 2004 for companies with over 1,000 employees. Beyond regular working hours, it is legal to demand up to 12 hours of overtime during the week, plus another 16 hours on weekends. The 40-hour workweek expanded to companies with 300 employees or more in 2005, 100 employees or more in 2006, 50 or more in 2007, 20 or more in 2008 and a full inclusion to all workers nationwide in July 2011. The government has continuously increased public holidays to 16 days in 2013, more than the 10 days of the United States and double that of the United Kingdom's 8 days. Despite those efforts, South Korea's work hours are still relatively long, with an average 2,163 hours per year in 2012. Topic: <inaudible> Japan. Work hours in Japan are decreasing, but many Japanese still work long hours. Recently, Japan's Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare MHLW, issued a draft report recommending major changes to the regulations that govern working hours. The centerpiece of the proposal is an exemption from overtime pay for white collar workers. Japan has enacted an 8 hour work day and 40 hour work week, 44 hours in specified workplaces. The overtime limits are, 15 hours a week, 27 hours over 2 weeks, 43 hours over 4 weeks, 45 hours a month, 81 hours over 2 months and 120 hours over 3 months. However, some workers get around these restrictions by working several hours a day without clocking in whether physically or metaphorically. The overtime allowance should not be lower than 125% and not more than 150% of the normal hourly rate. Mexico 
Mexican laws mandate a maximum of 48 hours of work per week, but they are rarely observed or enforced due to loopholes in the law, the volatility of labor rights in Mexico, and its underdevelopment relative to other members' countries of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD. Indeed, private sector employees often work overtime without receiving overtime compensation. Fear of unemployment and threats by employers explain in part why the 48-hour work week is disregarded. Colombia Articles 161-167 of the Substantive Work Code in Colombia provide for a maximum of 48 hours of work a week. Australia In Australia, between 1974 and 1997 no marked change took place in the average amount of time spent at work by Australians of prime working age, that is, between 25 and 54 years of age. Throughout this period, the average time spent at work by prime working age Australians including those who did not spend any time at work remained stable at between 27 and 28 hours per week. This unchanging average, however, masks a significant redistribution of work from men to women. Between 1974 and 1997, the average time spent at work by prime working age Australian men fell from 45 to 36 hours per week, while the average time spent at work by prime working age Australian women rose from 12 to 19 hours per week. In the period leading up to 1997, the amount of time Australian workers spend at work outside the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays also increased. In 2009, a rapid increase in the number of working hours was reported in a study by the Australia Institute. The study found the average Australian worked 1,855 hours per year at work. According to Clive Hamilton of the Australia Institute, this surpasses even Japan. The Australia Institute believes that Australians work the highest number of hours in the developed world. From January 1, 2010, Australia enacted a 38 hour workweek in accordance with the Fair Work Act 2009, with an allowance for additional hours as overtime. The vast majority of full time employees in Australia work additional overtime hours. A 2015 survey found that of Australia's 7.7 .7 million full-time workers, 5 million put in more than 40 hours a week, including 1.4 million who worked more than 50 hours a week and 270,000 who put in more than 70 hours. <laughs> United States In 2016, the average man employed full-time worked 8.4 hours per work day, and the average woman employed full-time worked 7.8 hours per work day. There is no mandatory minimum amount of paid time off for sickness or holiday but the majority of full-time civilian workers have access to paid vacation time. Because of the pressure of working, time is increasingly viewed as a commodity. Recent history By 1946 the United States government had inaugurated the 40-hour work week for all federal employees. Beginning in 1950, under the Truman administration, the United States became the first known industrialized nation to explicitly albeit secretly, and permanently forswear a reduction of working time. Given the military-industrial requirements of the Cold War, the authors of the then-secret National Security Council Report 68, NSC 68 proposed the U.S. government undertake a massive permanent national economic expansion that would let it «siphon off» a part of the economic activity produced to support an ongoing military buildup to contain the Soviet Union. In his 1951 annual message to the Congress, President Truman stated, in terms of manpower, our present defense targets will require an increase of nearly one million men and women in the armed forces within a few months, and probably not less than four million more in defense production by the end of the year. This means that an additional 8% of our labor force, and possibly much more, will be required by direct defense needs by the end of the year. These manpower needs will call both for increasing our labor force by reducing unemployment and drawing in women and older workers, and for lengthening hours of work in essential industries. 
According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average non-farm private sector employee worked 34.5 hours per week as of June 2012. As President Truman's 1951 message had predicted, the share of working women rose from 30% of the labor force in 1950 to 47% by 2000, growing at a particularly rapid rate during the 1970s. According to a Bureau of Labor Statistics report issued May 2002, in 1950, the overall participation rate of women was 34%. The rate rose to 38% in 1960, 43% in 1970, 52% in 1980, and 58% in 1990 and reached 60% by 2000. The overall labor force participation rate of women is projected to attain its highest level in 2010, at 62%. The inclusion of women in the workforce can be seen as symbolic of social progress as well as of increasing American productivity and hours worked. Between 1950 and 2007 official price inflation was measured to 861%. President Truman, in his 1951 message to Congress, predicted correctly that his military buildup will cause intense and mounting inflationary pressures. Using the data provided by the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics, Eric Roch has estimated productivity to have increased by nearly 400%. According to Roch, if productivity means anything at all, a worker should be able to earn the same standard of living as a 1950 worker in only 11 hours per week. In the United States, the working time for upper-income professionals has increased compared to 1965, while total annual working time for low-skill, low-income workers has decreased. This effect is sometimes called the leisure gap. The average working time of married couples, of both spouses taken together, rose from 56 hours in 1969 to 67 hours in 2000. Topic. Overtime rules Many professional workers put in longer hours than the 40-hour standard. In professional industries like investment banking and large law firms, a 40-hour workweek is considered inadequate and may result in job loss or failure to be promoted. Medical residents in the United States routinely work long hours as part of their training. Workweek policies are not uniform in the U.S. Many compensation arrangements are legal, and three of the most common are wage, commission, and salary payment schemes. Wage earners are compensated on a per-hour basis, whereas salaried workers are compensated on a per-week or per-job basis, and commission workers get paid according to how much they produce or sell. Under most circumstances, wage earners and lower-level employees may be legally required by an employer to work more than 40 hours in a week, however, they are paid extra for the additional work. Many salaried workers and commission-paid sales staff are not covered by overtime laws. These are generally called exempt positions, because they are exempt from federal and state laws that mandate extra pay for extra time worked. The rules are complex, but generally exempt workers are executives, professionals, or sales staff. For example, school teachers are not paid extra for working extra hours. Business owners and independent contractors are considered self-employed, and none of these laws apply to them. Generally, workers are paid time and a half, or 1.5 times the worker's base wage, for each hour of work past 40. California also applies this rule to work in excess of eight hours per day, but exemptions and exceptions significantly limit the applicability of this law. In some states, firms are required to pay double time, or twice the base rate, for each hour of work past 60, or each hour of work past 12 in one day in California, also subject to numerous exemptions and exceptions. This provides an incentive for companies to limit working time, but makes these additional hours more desirable for the worker. It is not uncommon for overtime hours to be accepted voluntarily by wage-earning workers. Unions often treat overtime as a desirable commodity when negotiating how these opportunities shall be partitioned among union members. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Brazil. The work time in Brazil is 44 hours per week, usually 8 hours per day and 4 hours on Saturday or 8.8 .8 hours per day. On duty, no meal break jobs are 6 hours per day. Public servants work 40 hours a week. It is worth noting that in Brazil meal time is not usually counted as work. 
There is a one hour break for lunch and work schedule is typically 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock noon, 1300 to 1800. In larger cities people have lunch meal on, near the work site, while in smaller cities a sizable fraction of the employees might go home for lunch. A 30-day vacation is mandatory by law and there are about 13 to 15 holidays a year, depending on the municipality. China China adopted a 40-hour week, eliminating half-day work on Saturdays. However, this rule has never been truly enforced, and unpaid or underpaid overtime working is common practice in China. Traditionally, Chinese have worked long hours, and this has led to many deaths from overwork, with the state media reporting in 2014 that 600,000 people were dying annually from overwork. Despite this, work hours have reportedly been falling for about three decades due to rising productivity, better labor laws, and the spread of the two-day weekend. The trend has affected both factories and white-collar companies that have been responding to growing demands for easier work schedules. Hong Kong Hong Kong has no legislation regarding maximum and normal working hours. The average weekly working hours of full-time employees in Hong Kong is 49 hours. According to the Price and Earnings Report 2012 conducted by UBS, while the global and regional average were 1,915 and 2,154 hours per year respectively, the average working hours in Hong Kong is 2,296 hours per year, which ranked the fifth longest yearly working hours among 72 countries under study. In addition, from the survey conducted by the Public Opinion Study Group of the University of Hong Kong, 79% of the respondents agree that the problem of overtime work in Hong Kong is severe, and 65% of the respondents support the legislation on the maximum working hours. In Hong Kong, 70% of surveyed do not receive any overtime remuneration. These show that people in Hong Kong concerns the working time issues. As Hong Kong implemented the minimum wage law in May 2011, the chief executive, Donald Tsang, of the Special Administrative Region pledged that the government will standardize working hours in Hong Kong. On 26 November 2012, the Labor Department of the HKSAR released the Report of the Policy Study on Standard Working Hours. The report covers three major areas, including, one, the regimes and experience of other places in regulating working hours, two, latest working time situations of employees in different sectors, and three, estimation of the possible impact of introducing standard working hour in Hong Kong. Under the selected parameters, from most loosened to most stringent, the estimated increase in labor cost vary from 1.1 billion to 55 billion Hong Kong dollars, and affect 957,100 36.7% of total employees to 2,378,900 of total employees. Various sectors of the community show concerns about the standard working hours in Hong Kong. The points are summarized as below. Topic. Opinions from various sectors Topic. Labor organizations Hong Kong Catholic Commission for Labor Affairs urges the government to legislate the standard working hours in Hong Kong, and suggests a 44-hour standard, 54 hours maximum working hours in a week. The organization thinks that long working time adversely affects the family and social life and health of employees. It also indicates that the current employment ordinance does not regulate overtime pays, working time limits nor rest day pays, which can protect employees' rights. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Businesses and related organizations. Generally, business sector agrees that it is important to achieve work-life balance, but does not support a legislation to regulate working hours limit. They believe, standard working hours, is not the best way to achieve work-life balance and the root cause of the long working hours in Hong Kong is due to insufficient labor supply. The managing director of Century Environmental Services Group, Catherine Yan, said, employees may want to work more to obtain a higher salary due to financial reasons. 
If standard working hour legislation is passed, employers will need to pay a higher salary to employees, and hence the employers may choose to segment work tasks to employer more part-time employees instead of providing overtime pay to employees." She thinks this will lead to a situation that the employees may need to find two part-time jobs to earn their living, making them wasting more time on transportation from one job to another. The chairman of the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce, Chow Chung Kong, believes that it is so difficult to implement standard working hours that apply across the board, specifically to accountants and barristers. In addition, he believes that standard working hours may decrease individual employees' working hours and would not increase their actual income. It may also lead to an increase of number of part-timers in the labor market. According to a study conducted jointly by the Business, Economic and Public Affairs Research Center and Enterprise and Social Development Research Center of Hong Kong Xu Yan University, 16% surveyed companies believe that a standard working hours policy can be considered, and 55% surveyed think that it would be difficult to implement standard working hours in businesses. Employer representative in the Labor Advisory Board, Stanley Lau, said that standard working hours will completely alter the business environment of Hong Kong. A affect small and medium enterprise and weaken competitiveness of businesses. He believes that the government can encourage employers to pay overtime salary, and there is no need to regulate standard working hours. Political parties on 17–18 October 2012, the Legislative Council members in Hong Kong debated on the motion legislation for the regulation of working hours." Chung Kwok Che proposed the motion, "...that is the council urges the government to introduce a bill on the regulation of working hours within this legislative session, the contents of which must include the number of standard weekly hours and overtime pay." As the motion was not passed by both functional constituencies and geographical constituencies, it was negative. The Hong Kong Federation of Trade Unions suggested a standard 44 hour work week with overtime pay of 1.5 times the usual pay. It believes the regulation of standard working hour can prevent the employers to force employees to work overtime without pay. Elizabeth Quat of the Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong (DAB) believed that standard working hours were a labor policy and was not related to family-friendly policies. The vice president of Young DAB, Wai Hung Chan, stated that standard working hours would bring limitations to small and medium enterprises. He thought that the government should discuss the topic with the public more before legislating standard working hours. The Democratic Party suggested a 44-hour standard work week and compulsory overtime pay to help achieve the balance between work, rest and entertainment of people in Hong Kong. The Labour Party believed regulating working hours could help achieve a work-life balance. It suggests an 8-hour work day, a 44-hour standard work week, a 60-hour maximum work week and an overtime pay of 1.5 times the usual pay. Poon Su Ping of Federation of Hong Kong and Kowloon Labor Unions thought that it is possible to set work hour limit for all industries, and the regulation on working hours can ensure the overtime payment by employers to employees, and protect employees' health. The Civic Party suggests to actively study setting weekly standard working hours at 44 hours to align with family-friendly policies." In LegCo election 2012, member of Economic Synergy, Jeffrey Lamb, believes that standard working hours would adversely affect productivity, tense the employer-employee relationship, and increase the pressure faced by businesses who suffer from inadequate workers. He does not support the regulation on working hours at its current situation. Topic. Government Matthew Chung Kin Chung, the Secretary for Labor and Welfare Bureau, said the Executive Council has already received the government report on working hours in June, and the Labor Advisory Board and the LegCo's Manpower Panel will receive the report in late November and December respectively. On 26 November 2012, the Labor Department released the report, and the report covered the regimes and experience of practicing standard working hours in selected regions, current work hour situations in different industries, and the impact assessment of standard working hours. Also, Matthew Chung mentioned that the government will form a select committee by first quarter of 2013, which will include government officials, representative of labor unions and employers associations, academics and community leaders, to investigate the related issues. 
He also said that it would perhaps be unrealistic to put forward a bill for standard working hours in the next one to two years. Topic: <laughs> Academics. Yip Su Fai, professor of the Department of Social Work and Social Administration of HKU, has noted that professions such as nursing and accountancy have long working hours and that this may affect people's social life. He believes that standard working hours could help to give Hong Kong more family-friendly workplaces and to increase fertility rates. Randy Chu, professor of the Department of Management of HKBU, has said that introducing standard working hours could avoid excessively long working hours of employees. He also said that nowadays Hong Kong attains almost full employment, has a high rental price and severe inflation, recently implemented minimum wage, and is affected by a gloomy global economy. He also mentioned that comprehensive considerations on macroeconomic situations are needed, and emphasized that it is perhaps inappropriate to adopt working time regulation as exemplified in other countries to Hong Kong. Li Shu Kam, associate professor of the Department of Economics and Finance of HKSYU, believes that standard working hours cannot deliver work-life balance. He referenced the research to the U.S. by the University of California, Los Angeles in 1999 and pointed out that in the industries and regions in which the wage elasticity is low, the effects of standard working hours on lowering actual working time and increasing wages is limited. For regions where the labor supply is inadequate, standard working hours can protect employees' benefits yet cause unemployment, but for regions such as Japan where the problem does not exist, standard working hours would only lead to unemployment. In addition, he said the effect of standard working hours is similar to that of for example giving overtime pay, making employees to favor overtime work more. In this sense, introducing standard working hours does not match its principle, to shorten work time and to increase the recreation time of employees. He believed that the key point is to help employees to achieve work-life balance and to get a win-win situation of employers and employees. Francis Louis, head and professor of the Department of Economics of Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, believed that standard working hours may not lower work time but increase unemployment. He used Japan as an example to illustrate that the implementation of standard working hours lowered productivity per head and demotivated the economy. He also said that even if the standard working hours can shorten employees' weekly working hours, they may need to work for more years to earn sufficient amount of money for retirement, i.e. delay their retirement age. The total working time over the course of a lifetime may not change. Lok Sang Ho, professor of economics and director of the Center for Public Policy Studies of Lingnan University, pointed out that as different employees perform various jobs and under different degrees of pressures, it may not appropriate to establish standard working hours in Hong Kong." And he proposed a 50-hour maximum work week to protect workers' health. <laughs> Singapore Singapore enacts an 8-hour normal work day, 9 hours including lunchtime, a 44-hour normal working week, and a maximum 48-hour work week. It is to note that if the employee works no more than 5 days a week, the employee's normal working day is 9 hour and the working week is 44 hours. Also, if the number of hours worked of the worker is less than 44 hours every alternate week, the 44-hour weekly limit may be exceeded in the other week. Yet, this is subjected to the pre-specification in the service contract and the maximum should not exceed 48 hours per week or 88 hours in any consecutive two-week time. In addition, a shift worker can work up to 12 hours a day, provided that the average working hours per week do not exceed 44 over a consecutive three-week time. The overtime allowance per overtime hour must not be less than 1.5 times of the employee's hour basic rates. Other countries The Kapauku people of Papua think it is bad luck to work two consecutive days. The Kung Bushmen work just two and a half days per week, rarely more than six hours per day. The work week in Samoa is approximately 30 hours, and although average annual Samoan cash income is relatively low, by some measures, the Samoan standard of living is quite good. In India, particularly in smaller companies, someone generally works for 11 hours a day and 6 days a week. No overtime is paid for extra time. 
Law enforcement is negligible in regulating the working hours. A typical office will open at 9 o'clock or 9.30 and officially end the work day at about 1900. However, many workers and especially managers will stay later in the office due to additional work load. However, large Indian companies and MNC offices located in India tend to follow a five-day, eight to nine hour per day working schedule. The Government of India in some of its offices also follows a five-day week schedule. Nigeria has public servants that work 35 hours per week. Recent trends Many modern workplaces are experimenting with accommodating changes in the workforce and the basic structure of scheduled work. Flextime allows office workers to shift their working time away from rush hour traffic, for example, arriving at 10 a.m. and leaving at 6 p.m. Telecommuting permits employees to work from their homes or in satellite locations not owned by the employer, eliminating or reducing long commute times in heavily populated areas. Zero-hour contracts establish work contracts without minimum hour guarantees. Workers are paid only for the hours they work. See also Basic income Business Day Hours of Work Commerce and Offices Convention, 1930 Hours of Work Industry Convention, 1919 Hours of Work and Manning C. Convention, 1936 Human Capital Kuroshi Labor Market Flexibility St. Monday Short Time Short Time Working Soviet Calendar Waiting for the Weekend Work-life balance